but it is 7.15, and you know what that means. It's time for our Monday morning mindfulness meditation session. So what we're going to do is start breathing. So this is something that you can practice at home. We'll only do five minutes because I want to get Dr. CJ on. So she can tell us about this wonderful science that we're going to talk about today, uh, therapy as well as neuroscience, which I know nothing about, but I'm, I am open and receptive to learning. And I hope that you are open and receptive to learning today, too, as we begin our breathing process. We simply inhale through the nose, hold it, and exhale. And what I want you to do is to close your eyes. You should not be looking at me. You should only be looking at the inside of your eyelids, okay? So close your eyes. And count to five to yourself. Inhale to the count of five. Hold it and release it. So sitting up straight, feet flat on the floor, nothing in your hands, nothing in your lap, and nothing in your heart but love and life and laughter. As we breathe in, count to five, breathe in. Hold it. And exhale. Inhale deeply. Concentrating on the breath as you inhale and exhale, know that the mind will wander, and that's okay, because that's what the mind does. And when you find the mind wandering to your to-do list of what you're going to eat later, just simply say to yourself out loud, thinking, and go back to that breath as you inhale deeply. And as we inhale, <clears throat> excuse me, and exhale, we give thanks for the power of the breath. Because we know that someone somewhere is unable to breathe on their own. We give thanks for the breath of life that travels from the top of our head down through our face. our shoulders, our solar plexus as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, continuing to send the energy down through our sides, our hips, our thighs, our knees. Oh, yes, those glorious knees that keep us moving. As we continue to send the energy down through the legs, the ankles, the ball of the feet, the heel, the arch, and the instep. And those toes, yes, wiggle those toes, sending that energy back up through the ankles as we inhale deeply. Bringing that energy back up through the legs and the knees and the thighs and the buttocks and the back. As we continue to breathe in and breathe out, giving thanks as the energy continues to come back up through the chest and the shoulders and the neck as we breathe in, continuing to sending that energy back up to the top of the head, through the chakras, and as that energy continues to flow as we breathe in, and as we breathe out. As we breathe in, we give thanks for the power of the two most powerful words on the planet. And those words are, I am. As we breathe in, I am happy. I am healthy. I am whole and complete. Feel free to say it to yourself or out loud. The universe is listening. As we breathe in. I am happy, I am healthy, I am whole and complete. Ah, yes. I can see the smile on your face. Once more as we breathe in. I am pure love, I am light, I am eternal.
As I give thanks for this breath, I give thanks knowing that all I need at any given point in time in life when I am confronted with chaos or confusion or anxiety or stress, I simply breathe in and breathe out. Because I know that this is a practice that will keep me centered as it sends a message to all of my bodily organs, beginning with my heart, liver, lungs, spleen, and spine. As I breathe in, I give thanks that I have blessed each and every organ in my body from the brain on down, knowing that the signals that this breath is sending the trillions of cells in my body, good messages to do good things today, to slow things down no matter what chaos or confusion is going on in the world. As we breathe in, and as we breathe out, We give thanks for love, light, and energy. We give thanks for all the systems that are working in the body that we do not or may not even be aware of, the digestive system, the assimilation system, and most importantly, the elimination system. As we breathe in, And as we breathe out, one more long, deep breath. Inhale deeply. And breathe out. And with this long, last, deep inhale, you will inhale deeply. Hold it. And as we exhale, bring your head forward, chin to chest, and slowly rotate your head to the left. Slowly, sitting up straight so you don't get a crook in your back. Slowly bringing your head around to the back. Slowly, 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 slowly bringing it around to the right. Slowly, slowly, and slowly bringing it back around to the front. Chin to chest, head up. Take a long, deep breath. And exhale, bringing your chin to chest and slowly rotating the head to the right. Slowly, slowly, still breathing. Slowly, you should just be getting to the back. And slowly bringing that head around to the front. Slowly, not there yet, still breathing. Inhale deeply, head up. And as you exhale, look to your left as far as you can, feeling a stretch in the right of your neck. Bringing your head back forward. Inhale deeply. And exhale, turning your head to the right as far as you can, feeling the stretch in the left of your neck. And bringing the head back, inhale deeply. And exhale. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just activated the happiness gene. Yay! You have sent your body trillions of messages just through your breath that today is a good day. Mm. And if you practice that on a daily basis, guess what? You will become accustomed to it. So, you know, if you're in the midst of madness and you just start breathing and people start looking at you like you're crazy, that's okay. Just breathe. And if they come up in your circle and you're not ready to participate, like the social distancing, have a little garlic or a little onion on your breath and just start breathing. And I promise you they will go away. Yes, they will. So tell me, Dr. CJ, I see you're laughing. How does that make you feel this morning? I'm crazy excited. I was trying to hold myself together. The deep breathing is a perfect example of both the orthopedic and the neuroscience. Mm. How, Actually, how so? How so? So, um, 
On the orthopedic side, so think of mechanically, right? So the body itself, like when you take deep, deep breaths, especially if you're encouraging your breath to go out through the sides of the body and not just straight up, mm. you're actually getting your ribs to separate from each other slowly, which helps to get mobility in your middle back. <coughs> really? Back. Yeah. Wow. On the neuroscience side, so it's like a mechanical orthopedic stuff, right? So you can stretch your back all you want, but unless the ribs also move, we're going to have continuous stiffness building up in the back. So getting your ribs to move through the deep breathing is super helpful for that. On the neuroscience side, deep breaths, what you just said about the elimination system, mm-hmm. deep breaths tell your nervous system, we are safe, rest, digest. Everything's okay. Really? If you catch yourself doing super short and shallow breaths, you are secretly telling your nervous system, we are being chased by a lion. <laughs> really? And the nervous system is going to slow down digestion. It's going to go into the hyperactive protective mode because that's what the nervous system does. It's designed to protect us. Okay. So if you are exhibiting at those messages through those short and shallow breaths, it's going to look for every excuse and every small sensation to be like, oh my goodness, we're being cut by a knife, or maybe you just step on something. So your nervous system is super riled up, but doing the deep breathing helps to bring it down notches. Wow, I didn't know that. And let me, go ahead. Let me tell you how that started. When I first started this show a couple of years ago, um, I wanted to add a little, my background is in broadcasting, so I, I come from commercial radio. And I know in order to keep the viewer's attention, you've got to break things up in segments. So I'm asking myself, what is it that I can do to really get people involved the moment that they start begin the show with us? And the thought came to me just to start breathing. I was like, start breathing? People don't think I'm crazy. I'm going to start breathing. And as I begin to breathe, the spirit, universe, creator, whatever you want to call he, she, it, said, just listen to me. Whatever I say, that's what you said. So all of that you just experienced this morning, that was not for me. I have had no medical training. I'm not a licensed practitioner of any sort, but I do listen to to the creator. That's how I wrote all the books that I have because I listened. And I tell people I'm an author, but I'm a messenger. I didn't write those books. I listened. So thank you for sharing that this morning. And for our listeners, and viewers who just tuned in, they need to know just a little bit more about you and who you are and how you came to be with VelonaHealth.com. Of course. Um, I got so excited about the breathing. I was like, oh, we have to talk about this. Okay, great. So my name is Sijin Mimi. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I just moved to Chicago in September, and New York City is a city of the big, bustling, uh, PT mill-type world. world. Uh, so I opened up my own clinic, and it's named Avalona Health, because we're looking at the whole body at the same time, which doesn't sound, it sounds like it should be something you do in every clinic, but in our clinic in particular, we take care of the entire person at the same time. Because, so if you go somewhere else, you shouldn't be saying that maybe on radio, but <laughs> they will limit you and make you choose one joint at a time. And my ethics are super strong, and that is not okay with me because two things happen if you pick one joint at a time, right? So shoulder and neck are my favorite example to use. The shoulder and the neck on one side, 18 muscles touch both the shoulder and the neck and attach them together on just one side. Thank you. See, it's crazy. It's such a small space, and there are 18 on this side, another 18 on the other side. So, of course, if your shoulder is angry or if your neck is angry, the other one is going to also be oh, in some way. Really? So as a patient... How can we expect you to decide, am I treating my shoulder or am I treating my neck in physical therapy? So we take care of the whole body at the same time because to take care of one joint at a time, one of two things happens, right? So either you put a Band-Aid on the situation, then it will come back later, Mm. or you chase it out of that joint into the neighboring joint. Okay. What so would it is important we take care of the whole person at the same time. What would what would that look like, a Band-Aid on the situation? What 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 would that look like? So that would look like doing uh, manual therapy, whether it's massage, mobilization, any kind of physical uh, um, treatment to one joint, so restricting it only to the shoulder. Mm. And neglecting the oh. entire line of the muscle that goes from one to the other. Okay. Um, 
doing exercises only for the shoulder and not addressing you know, the stability of the neck, the mobility of the neck of what you just did with the breathing exercises. Okay. Um, yeah, so taking care of the whole system essentially. Okay. I'm so glad you said that because I had an experience with uh, a, a shoulder issue, this shoulder. I couldn't I couldn't lift it. I couldn't do anything with it. Just woke up one morning and it, it just wouldn't move. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that when I come back. 